Hello dear students. So in this video, let's start uh, the new series of lessons. Among that, uh, the first lesson is advent of Europeans to India. So in this part, we going to have a, a quick uh, discussion on this lesson. Advent of Europeans to India. So here I cover uh, the main uh, important points of this lesson and uh, uh, related to board exam, how this lesson is very important. All that things let's discuss. So let's start. The first lesson, advent of Europeans to India. So you all know that uh, <clears throat> India had a commercial relationship with uh, other countries. It had relationship, trade and uh, co commerce relationship uh, with Europe. So India had uh, trade relationship and uh, commercial relationship with Europe. So why this uh, relationship, uh, commercial relationship India had with uh, European countries? So because there was a great demand for spices in Europe. So European countries had a trade relationship with Asian countries. So for uh, which crops there was a great demand for? One is pepper and uh, cardamom, ginger and clove. So these are the very crops. Those crops had a great demand in Europe. So that they decided to have a trade link with Asian countries, particularly India. So one of the very important uh, places here, that is Constantinople. Constantinople is the very important place that was the center of European trade. Center of European trade. And also it was also called as the gate of European trade the gate of European trade and it is it was also called as center of European trade Constantinople so one more thing we have to concentrate that is so which are the merchants and traders they had uh, controlled uh, different uh, trade one is Arab merchants and another one is uh, uh, Italian merchants, Italian merchants and Arab merchants had the monopoly over different trade. So Arab merchants, they had monopoly over the Asian trade and Italy had the monopoly over European trade. So one is Italy and another one is Arab merchants. They had a commercial relationship with Asian countries. And next one concept is uh, the fall of Constantinople the fall of constantinople what is this constantinople constantinople is the place which links asia and european countries so this constantinople was once captured by ottoman turks ottoman turks captured constantinople when it was captured it was captured in 1453 so every trade, Asia and European trade, was taking place through this Constantinople. So but in 1490, 1453, this Constantinople was captured by Ottoman Turks. So that what happened, Turks started to levy more taxes on goods passed through. So when the uh, uh, Constantinople come under the control of the Ottoman Turks, they started to levy more taxes on goods that pass through. So that uh, the traders, European traders felt it is unprofitable. So that they stopped business with Asian countries. So when the trade was stopped, the link, commercial link between Asia and Europe was totally stopped. So why stopped? Because Ottoman Turks captured 
Constantinople in 1453. That was the reason. So when the trade was stopped, Spain and Portugal encouraged sailing to reach India. So how European country has to reach Asian countries? That was the very big challenge because that was the only land uh, land route that was constantinople was the only land route to reach asian countries there was no other sea routes so for the first time spain and portugal encouraged sailing encouraged navigation to reach india to reach asian countries so remember which are the two countries first initiated uh, sailing or navigation to reach india so one more thing uh, some uh, scientific inventions led to uh, navigation so which are the scientific inventions helped navigation one is compass one is astrolabe one is gunpowder map all these helped a lot for searching new sea routes to india so remember which are the inventions that encouraged that helped a lot to reach india or to for the navigation these are all helped compass astrolabe gunpowder and map so many times asked this question what are the scientific inventions that led to sailing that led to search of new sea route to india and uh, you know that uh, Vasco da Gama, for the first time he came to India in 1498. Okay, where he reached that is uh, Calicut, Kerala state. Vasco da Gama he was a Portugal, sorry Portuguese. Okay, there are many European com uh, companies came to India. One is uh, Portuguese, they came to India, Dutch came to India, and French came to India, and English came to India. Remember, Portugal, they are from, Portuguese, they are from Portugal, Dutch, they are from Holland, French, they are from France, English, they are from England. And one more thing you have to remember, United East India Company, that is related to Dutch, French East India Company, related to France, English East India Company that is related to English, England. Okay, Portuguese, uh, first one Portuguese. One thing, remember, they are first to come to India, they are last to leave India. This is the very important. First to came to India and last to leave to India. And one more thing, uh, Francisco Almeida, the Viceroy, he was Viceroy. He introduced uh, a blue water policy blue water policy very important thing remember who introduced blue water policy why introduced there was also, that is also very important to control sea route to control sea route francisco almeida introduced blue water policy one more uh, viceroy is there alfonso de albuquerque remember one is francisco almeida one is alfonso de albuquerque he was called as real founder of Portuguese because uh, he captured Goa from uh, Sultan of Bijapur in uh, 1510. So that was a very major uh, battle against uh, Sultan of Bijapur. So that credit goes to Alfonsori Albuquerque. Goa was their administrative center. Remember, Goa is related to Portuguese. And one more is Dutch. They are from Holland, I said already. Uh, okay. They started their company in uh, 1602. Okay. Next one. English. English. Uh, okay. Queen Elizabeth issued Royal Charter to East India Company. East India Company, it is a private company. East India Company is nothing but a private company that company decided to make trade with india 
so that company english east india company decided to make trade with india and also got a uh, permission from uh, the queen of uh, england that is queen elizabeth she uh, she given permission to make trade with india that is what we call that permission is nothing but what we call royal charter that royal charter is issued by queen elizabeth to east india company for it was just for the license of uh, 15 years that license was given on december 31st 1600 okay and one more thing we have to remember jahangir who was jahangir the mogal emperor at the time of uh, 17th century he issued royal permission to establish factory at surat for english remember who was the mogal king had given permission to establish factory at surat that was jahangir given to permission given to english one more uh, came to uh, jahangir's court that is uh, sir thomas row sir thomas row he was also english ambassador came to jahangir's court uh, he was uh, sent by james first james first was the king of england mm, they too got permission to establish uh, factories okay next uh, english uh, they established saint george fort where is saint george fort it, it was in it is in madras 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 alli irudu saint george fort and one more thing uh, <clears throat> english that is east india company got uh, bombay present mumbai old name is bombay so how this bombay come to to the hands of english so actually charles ii uh, the prince of england gave this the place bombay to east india company as a gift for annual rent 10 pounds remember who gave bombay to east india company that is charles ii the prince of england okay one more fort they built fort william so already i said one uh, one port that is uh, saint george fort that is in madras one more fort is there that is fort william fort william place is calcutta so two forts they established saint george fort and saint sorry fort william so these are the two forts and uh, what about french french they started their first factory at surat and english too started their first factory at surat and uh, okay their uh, french major trade center is pondicherry remember major trade center of the french is pondicherry mm, next one uh, english came to india french came to india dutch came to india all the companies came to india but there was a competition between uh, english and french so there was a huge competition between english and french so they made many wars so those wars we call carnatic wars carnatic wars karnatic is a place sorry region karnatic is a region uh, the coastal uh, areas the coastal region of tamil nadu is nothing but we call it karnatic so here uh, the political uprising aroused in uh, hyderabad and karnatic so and english and french had exploited the situation so here uh, hyderabad and karnataka these are the two region so karnatic was the region hyderabad was the region so here political condition in hyderabad and karnatic was not good so that 
to capture hyderabad and karnataka region british and french planned so that led to wars different wars so those wars series of wars which had between english and french we call them carnatic wars so this is the first carnatic war 1746 to 48 and uh, this war was ended with uh, exla chapel agreement first carnatic war ended with exla chapel agreement and uh, second carnatic war they made in uh, 1749 and uh, 54 so here uh, uh, the uh, agreement was pandicherry agreement remember pandicherry agreement was the result of second uh, carnatic war and also third carnatic war third carnatic war 1756 to 63 uh this is very important because uh, usually two marks uh, question comes here here see what are the results of third carnatic war so remember here so as a result of third carnatic war french all the carnatic wars held between uh, french and english the third carnatic war after the end of third carnatic war what happened French lost all the places in India. Totally, they lost all the places what they captured before. This war ended with the Treaty of Paris. Remember, Treaty of Paris. Second point, and third point is, Pondicherry returned back to French. Only one place returned back to French. Pondicherry was the very administrative and trade center of the French. they lost importance in india the political importance in india totally they lost and british consolidated their power in india so these are all very important points related to third carnatic war what are the results of third carnatic war this is very important in terms of uh, examination and battle of plassey 1757 one more battle is there that is battle of baksar so what was the reason for the battle of plassey and uh, what are the outcomes which means results so remember the battle of plassey we are nadive nadithu another very important between whom the battle of plassey was held between uh, siraj uddawl and english english ra mattu siraj uddawl nadive nadantha battle that is what we call battle of plassey 1757 so what are the reasons then one is misuse of dastaks is the reason second one is mending of fort without permission second reason third reason is black room tragedy okay next let's see first one let's see uh, what is dastak dastak is nothing but license to make trade <clears throat> license to make trade it is nothing but dastaks so dastaks misuse misuse of dastaks who misused the dastaks who misused the dastaks and what is dastak okay uh, license to make trade is dastak who misused this british misused the dastaks so dastaks what they got the license they totally misused and that misuse led to loss of treasury of bengal that misuse led to loss heavy loss to the bengal so that was the major reason and second one is mending of fort without permission repairing the forts and building new forts in bengal that is to without permission of the king of the bengal so english repaired the calcutta fort without permission of the bengal king so that was the second reason third reason is black room tragedy so what happened black room tragedy in black room tragedy about a nawab of bengal that is sirajuddaul imprisoned 146 englishmen 
imprisoned 146 Englishmen in a small room. 146 Englishmen in a small room. Due to suffocation, 123 died out of 146. So this incident enraged the Robert Clive. Robert Clive he is belongs to English, British. So he rushed to Bengal. Who rushed to Bengal? Ben Robert Clive rushed to Bengal. And that led to the war between Sirajuddaul and English. English was represented by Robert Clive. So it is actually the war between Robert Clive and Sirajuddaul. So what happened after the end of uh, 1757 revolt? One thing is proved that is immortality, immorality, sorry, mortality, Allah, immorality and lack of unity among the Indians, it proved. And one more thing it proved, the greed of business of the English. It proved greed of the business. So Mir Jafar became the new Nawab, remember, very important. Actually, there was Siraj Uddal. So one more uh, new Nawab was appointed to Bengal, that is Mir Jafar. And uh, company, East India Company, gained ex exclusive rights over Bengal. Exclusive rights means uh, they have the all rights to control Bengal. All trade rights to control Bengal. And Mir Jafar had to pay 17 crore and 17, 70 lakh rupees uh, as a relief to the Siraj Uddaul attack. And Mir Jafar, who was newly appointed, became the victim of the company. Uh, he started to uh, play as ordered by the British East India Company so that uh, it led to bankrupt and which means corruption in Bengal heavy loss heavy I mean economic loss to the Bengal so these are all outcomes one more is Battle of Baksar 1764 1764 so we have to remember between whom the Battle of Baksar held and what were the uh, outcome let's uh, start Mir Qasim was the uh, able administrator Mir Qasim he was loyal to the company Mir Qasim who was Mir Qasim actually after the end of Battle of Plassey, Mir Jafar was appointed new Nawab to the Bengal. New Jafar, Mir Jafar was removed and one more Nawab was appointed to Bengal, that is Mir Qasim. Mir Qasim again removed and again Mir Jafar was appointed to the Bengal. So now Mir Qasim decided to make war. Here, see, um, here is one alliance that is Mir Qasim, Shah Alam II, Nawab of Aud. These are all one group Mir Qasim, Shah Alam II, Nawab of Aud. So that is against. British. British army was uh, uh, led by Hector Munro. So this war is nothing but we call Battle of Baksar 1764. Okay, what happened in uh, 1764? Results. It can be asked for 3 marks and 2 marks as well. Shah Alam II. Who was this Shah Alam II? Shah Alam II was a Mughal emperor Shah Alam II accorded Diwani rights to over Bengal 
Divani writes. What is Divani writes? To whom Divani writes was given. Divani writes means right to collect tax. This Divani writes was given to British. Given by Shah Alam II. Remember. And he gave away all rights over Bengal. Who? Shah Alam II. And also, Nawab of Aud had to give a fine of 50 lakh rupees. Nawab of Aud. Because for waging war against British, the company paid pension to whom? Mir Jafar son. And uh, took over all entire administration of the Bengal. Real holders of the Bengal and Orissa and uh, Bihar, who British became the real masters of uh, three regions. One is Bihar, one is Bengal, and one is Orissa. As a result of uh, Battle of Baksar, see, Robert Clive, you know that. Robert Clive introduced dual government. So dual government is very important in terms of examination. What is this dual government? British had the right to collect tax. Under the dual government concept, British had right to collect land tax. Whereas Nawab of Bengal had power over administration. Administration was run by Nawab. Collection of tax is belongs to British. Good idea. And also justice and many other uh, matters are related to Nawab. Only tax collection is belongs to British. This concept is dual government introduced by Robert Clive. And uh, as a result of the Battle of Baksar, British gained political control over India. So totally they became the masters of India after two important wars that is Battle of Plassey and Battle of Baksar. So here what can you expect in board examination? So one you can expect that is what are the outcomes of Battle of Baksar? It can be asked. One more thing can be asked. What are the results of Battle of Plassey? Outcomes. both. And Mathe two marks that is third Anglo Carnatic War. Sorry, Anglo Carnatic Third Carnatic War results two marks. And uh, one more thing fall of Constantinople two marks. Fall of Constantinople. What are the scientific inventions scalable? And what are the crops that had great demand in Europe? Is scalable. So these are the very major things you have to focus on. This lesson is uh, in terms of examination. This lesson is only for two marks and three marks. That's it. Maximum is two marks. That's it. So all these things just you have to remember and uh, here is a particular uh, uh, thing that you can see here you can scan this uh, thing barcode if you scan this it can take you to a quiz you can play the quiz on this lesson e barcode anna niwo scan madidre one quiz barata e lesson mele advent of europeans to india e lesson bage nanestu tilkondidini anta neevu illi check maadkobodu okay thank you